Have you ever dreamed of being a SOC analyst on a high stakes mission to stop a cyber attack from an advanced persistent threat? At CTF, you can turn that dream into reality. Hey, real quick programming update. The name of the CTF actually changed after initial filming, and now it's called Control Alt Detect. But instead of reshooting the whole video, we're just not going to say anymore in the video. Let's get back into this amazing platform. Hi, I'm Gerald Dozier from Simply Cyber, and in this video, you're going to see the most innovative, epic blue team focused CTF ever produced. Cyber CTFs are traditionally fun challenges of various puzzles, each worth points allowing players or teams to accumulate those points and ultimately win. But typically they're one-off puzzles or challenges that use cyber skills but with like a lab vibe to them. There's really no practical application to them. Well, is flipping the script by providing an accurate nation state threat actor attack and giving you all the tools, all the telemetry, and asking you to solve the mystery, earning points as you move along, uncovering the extent of the compromise. So what is is a unique capture the flag CTF event designed specifically for blue teamers, the cybersecurity defenders. And it's your chance to put your differ or digital forensics and incident response skills to the test in a realistic adrenaline pumping environment. With a focus on differ skills, this isn't just about coding or finding vulnerabilities focuses on the real world skills you need to investigate and respond to cyber threats. Think open source, Archimai, Velociraptor, open source tools you use in a real security operations center or the SOC. Here's what makes special. It's not just about competition. It's a learning experience. You'll get full visibility into a simulated advanced persistent threat incident, like a spy thriller unfolding before your eyes. Imagine following the breadcrumbs, piecing together evidence, and ultimately stopping the attack in its tracks. But who should participate, right? Is this, this sounds like for senior pros only, right? Wrong. Is it for everybody of every skill level? Yep. yep. The beauty of is that it's open to all skill levels. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a curious cyber amateur, there are challenges designed for you. Doubling down on value, the entire CTF uses free or open source tools. So you can take the knowledge and the practical skills that you gain from the event far beyond competition. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't know, Jerry, why should I take my time and do this CTF? Well, reason number one, this is a massive learning opportunity. Learning experience is awesome. You will sharpen your differ skills, put them to the test with real world tools and experience the thrill of a simulated cyber attack. Reason number two, and my favorite, networking and community. You will connect with fellow blue team defenders, share strategies, and build a strong professional network. It's a collaborative and competitive environment, pushing everyone to excel. And reason number three, is built by seasoned cyber defender pros, Eric Capuano and Whitney Champion. Eric and Whitney want to share why people need to jump on right away. Awesome, Jerry. Thank you so much for that really awesome introduction um, and, and discussion around what aims to be. So for anybody that's followed Whitney and I's work over the years, they may recall we were the creators of another similar CTF years ago called OpenSock. And uh, we poured a lot of love into that project for many years and were super fortunate to be able to run that CTF at conferences all around the world, including DEF CON. And then over the years, as, as you know, priorities shifted and, and the, the workload that it took to run that original CTF became a bit untenable. Sadly, we had to sunset it. But it didn't take long for Whitney and I to kind of come together again again and say, hey, I think we can do this again. And I think we could probably do it even easier and in, in a much uh, more scalable way than we used to. And uh, and that's what we did. We decided uh, we wanted to build a new defensive focus CTF because arguably there's just not enough of those and continue to kind of bring that gift to, you know, uh, DEF CON and, and anywhere else that we're able to run it. Because one of the things that we observed in the years of running a CTF like this is that the impact that it makes on the community is immeasurable. You know, we've, we've We've gotten countless testimonies of people who, after participating in a CTF like this, went and landed their first job in cybersecurity, sort of helped them shape and hone their skills as incident responders and SOC analysts. We knew that the impact was really profound, and it was something that we wanted to kickstart and bring it back to life. What really makes it unique or makes it different? And what I'll do is I'll bring up a quick screen share here and just show some of the key kind of facets or concepts around the CTF. So this will be familiar to especially some of our OpenSOC veterans. You, you'll recall sort of the 
the environment that we have built out and uh, and simulated. Uh, and I'm going to let uh, Whitney speak in a minute about some of the magic that goes into building this environment. But just to kind of to level set here, what, what's going on here? What is this? Well, what we've done is we've built this large you know, I would say medium-sized enterprise environment with many different systems across many different subnets with users and, and all kinds of things unfolding in here. But then where things get interesting is we unleash multiple attack scenarios across this environment. But the, the goal, the benefit uh, that we hope that folks take away from this is getting the hands-on experience with getting to run these types of investigations in an environment that's not their own. But I'd love to turn it over to uh, to my colleague, Whitney, because this whole environment that we build each and every time you run this, uh, this, this CTF is massively complex. We're talking dozens and dozens and dozens, dozens of systems with cloud infrastructure and all kinds of cool stuff. So Whitney, do you mind kind of walking us down memory lane a little bit and, and sort of talking about the way it used to be with, for instance, open sock and sort of how things have changed how things are different now yeah so as eric mentioned we decided to build it all from the ground up in gcp and so most of it is infrastructure's code brand new fresh so that includes the range itself that includes the attack infrastructure that includes all of the tools that the participants are going to be using the deeper tools like open search and velociraptor and so it's definitely more repeatable and hopefully more resilient even than years past so it's yet to be determined since we haven't had a million nerds beating up on it yet but um yeah it's been a lot more fun to build this time around because of all the things I just mentioned, a lot more clean. We're not worrying about outages going, <laughs> internet outages in Austin or hardware failing or any of that stuff this time around. And we're really excited. Absolutely. So I'd love to take an opportunity then to talk about some of the tools that participants are going to have access to during the CTF. So another big change to this new CTF that we're building is the introduction of a very powerful platform that we are near and dear to called Lima Charlie. And one of the reasons that we chose this is because one, it goes right in line with sort of the way that we've always made decisions around which tools to include in our CTF. And it is either tools that are uniquely the best at what they do. And most importantly, there has to be some free option to that tool that would allow people like students or entry level people to also get experience and practice with it. So we don't leverage any kind of commercial proprietary tools where you have to purchase licenses or anything like that. And so Lima Charlie fit the bill and it also significantly improved our ability to scale the CTF because Lima Charlie was built for this level of scale. It also brings a couple of really exciting capabilities that our participants have never had before. For instance, we now have a proper EDR agent sitting on all of these endpoints that the attacks are unfolding across. As you're investigating, you're going to have something we've never had before. You're going to have actual detections firing because with Lima Charlie, we can enable the Sigma rule set, which I know most folks are probably familiar with. It's an open source collection of detection rules. And we just turn them on. And now you're going to have Sigma alerts firing inside of Lima Charlie to kind of give you at least an idea of where suspicious things are happening. So we can say, okay, apparently on ACC05, there's some suspicious PowerShell executing. Well, now we can actually just go right to that moment in time and take a look and see what's going on, right? It's just so incredibly easy. It's, it's a capability we've never had before to be able to bring those detection signatures right into the platform. But another really cool capability that we have now is the ability to drill down into these endpoints. So for instance, if ACC05 is kicking out Sigma detections for suspicious activity, well, now we can actually go and drill down into that system very easily. We can just simply enumerate, for instance, all the network activity on that system, running processes. We can examine the process process list to find the interesting outliers. Like I think we had a PowerShell alert just a moment ago. So of course I'd be interested in PowerShell here. And I can even dive deeper into that particular process and see that it's communicating on the network. I can go and look at those network communications, extract out interesting IP addresses. And I mean, there's so, so, so much more. But I also want to be clear, this is not only a Lima Charlie uh, focused uh, CTF. Matter of fact, we built this in, in such a way that you don't even have to use Lima Charlie. It's just, you're going to want to when you see all the capabilities. But just like in our previous projects that you've seen us do, we're going to bring some of our favorite open source tools uh, to the table here. So another one that a lot of you may be familiar with is Archimate right? Which is an open source, full packet capture uh, solution and that we absolutely love. It's so incredibly powerful. So all of the network traffic in this environment is being recorded and cataloged by Archimate. So analysts and participants will have the option to come in here and write queries for network related uh, information. So for instance,
instance, maybe over here, I learned about PowerShell communicating to a suspicious IP. Well, I can come in here and I can start looking at the full PCAPs and I can actually see what that network communication looks like. And I can dive down into these sessions and view inside and take a look and see what's going on, which is just an incredibly cool thing to be able to do. But we're also gonna expose other tools such as open search, which many will know as the truly open source variant of Elastic, the hard fork from the Elasticsearch project. So you're gonna have open search with dashboards and the ability to run raw queries against all the telemetry, both from you know, the EDR agent to Sysmon to the native Windows event logs, everything is gonna be here. And so again, to kind of recap how this works, right? We're basically giving you all the tools you could ever hope for to give you visibility into what's going on inside this environment. And then we're going to run many different attack chains across the network. And then there's going to be a Jeopardy style scoreboard where it's going to give you breadcrumbs to say, okay, there was an attack. Here's how it began. We know this much. We know that a suspicious email was sent to one of our victim users. And all we know is the name of the attachment. That's kind of an idea of how a scenario could begin. And so you would start with this one limited piece of information, such as the name of an email attachment. And you'd start trying to uncover, okay, well, who were the recipients of those emails? Who actually opened the attachment? And in, when they open the attachment, what happens next, right? And it's just going to basically be the entire investigative process unfolding as questions on a scoreboard. And so it's as real world as it gets. This is basically a day in the life of a SOC analyst or an incident responder is working through an investigation methodically, you know, basically building out the story of every Everything that happened from that very initial attack vector to what did the threat actor come here to do, right? Did they come here to run ransomware? Did they come here to steal intellectual property? We don't know. We got to figure that out, right? So that's basically it in a nutshell. would love to also share with, uh, with the audience here how you can participate, how you can get involved. If this sounds interesting and exciting to you, we will be running at DEF CON here this summer. It is going to be an in-person CTF. So in order to participate, all you have to do is come to the Blue Team Village at DEF CON this year. Come and hang out. Come and visit us and we'll hand you a card that'll have information on how you can get started. Thanks, Eric and Whitney. That was awesome. So are you ready to have a virtual knife fight with an APT, as Eric put it? Are you ready to test your differ skills and take on it's only available in person at cyber conferences like Blue Team Village at DEF CON, Texas Cyber Summit, and more. So check conferences in your area or where you're going to see if Eric and Whitney are bringing to you. Check the link below to go directly to the website where all that information is going to be there. And remember, whether it's you or you and a team, you and your friends, anyone can compete, anyone can win. And the best part for the community is that it's free and uses free and open source tools. So it's completely accessible to everybody. Sign up using the link in the description. Don't miss out on this amazing learning and networking opportunity. And for even more tips on becoming a rock star SOC analyst, check out this playlist. So you want to be a SOC analyst. It's the most popular one on the channel. And it's actually built on top of Eric Capuano's blog post series. You're going to love it. See you in the next one.